delighted to see you all here today to celebrate uh, the career and life of Art Kramer here at Beckman Institute. Let's give Art a hand. Now, Art asked us to keep this simple, so we canceled the parade and the fireworks <laughs> and, all the, and all the balloons we were going to set off to go through the, atri through the atrium. Uh, but I am very pleased that we have a, an excellent program of speakers who I think can all um, attest to Art's uh, great leadership skills, his fantastic scholarly accomplishments, and his uh, wonderful sense of humor and adventure that has made us such a treasure for us to work with him here at Bedford. Our first speaker will be um, the Chancellor of the University of Illinois, Barbara Wilson. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you all. Actually, Art, I haven't had a chance to say hi, so now I'm saying it as I look at you. And I want to welcome everyone here. This is such a great turnout, uh, and some of you have come back to campus in, in, uh, for, for the first time in many months or even years, and we welcome all of you uh, to this uh, event. I, I want to also thank Patty and, of course, the Beckman team for organizing this event. I didn't know we were going to have what, a parade and all sorts of other things afterwards, so I'm really excited now. Uh, but in all seriousness, I, I'm here today to just give some brief remarks and to really thank uh, Art and also Lori. And there she is. There's Lori. Um, this is always one of those events where you have real mixed emotions, and I certainly do. I was just talking with Lori a minute ago, and you know, it's with uh, excitement and, and happiness and pride for them, and also a good bit of sadness for us at what we're losing. Um, all of you know that Art and Lori have had a huge impact on this campus, and mostly this is about art because there's another event to honor Lori, but I can't help bringing both of them into this in my remarks today. Um, and, and really, when you think about the impact on a campus, it's hard to, uh, to overestimate what Art and Lori have been to this institution. They've uh, been here really for decades, and not very many of us can say that. Um, to start a career and, and bring it to such a height of accomplishments and stay at one place and really uh, dig your, your, your heels in and, and make this a home and spend a lot of time and energy developing uh, the institution is very rare these days and it's something that we should really celebrate because we don't see it as often as we might like. Uh, when I think about how this great institute called Beckman be came about, you have to give Art a big part of the credit of the original vision of this institute. And some people, I mean, when I travel around, people often comment on the Beckman as just this amazing place. It's, some people talk about it like it's a, a work of science fiction or something. They just can't imagine that we have an institute of such great accomplishments that truly is interdisciplinary in the way that it is. Plus, it's a beautiful building, and it brings people from all over the campus and really all over the world to come to a, a place like this to study hard problems from an interdisciplinary perspective. Perspective. And I would say that it's not any exaggeration to say that art played an enormous role in developing this institute and shaping its, um, its future and its current status uh, as, as a world-class leader, really, in what we do here at Illinois. Um, I also want to just say that, that you know, when, when two people decide to leave us, we were... Um, we have to sit, take stock about, is there something we did? Is it something we didn't do? Is, is there some way we could have changed this? And you know, I've known Art and Lori for a long time, and I can honestly say, no, I don't think there was anything that we could have done in this case. Because um, when a child uh, is a big part of your life, you want to be close to family. And so in a way, what we're celebrating is the ability for Art and Lori to, to get into the next phase of their life and to be closer to Annie. We just want her to find a job in Boston so that this all works out really well, and I know she will, um, and to begin the next phase of their incredible careers. But what I just said to Lori, and I'm going to say to you, Art, you know, Illinois is always your home. We are always your family. So don't hesitate to come back and visit us often. Come back and celebrate with us. Come back and challenge us. Come back and be part of all of the things that we're going to continue to do in your honor and to continue your legacy. So thank you so much. Your friends of mine, your colleagues of mine, we will miss you. But you better come back. And Lori, 
you better come back to book club often. So, um, so let's give them both a really a strong round of applause. Program, but I think, are you taking over, Patty? Or are you? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you very much, Barb. Our next speaker is Peter Schiffer, the Vice Chancellor for Research. All right, well, th as Barb just said, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here, even though it's a little bit of a bittersweet day where we are. Uh, very happy for both Lori and Art, but uh, of course, very sad to see them go. Uh, but tra transitions are the nature of our lives in academia, and uh, we, we will continue on the great tradition that you guys have started. Uh, we, we do have a new tool on campus uh, called Illinois Research Connections, and I, I took advantage of it to prepare for the remarks today. And th th this is an online tool where we can look up uh, the expertise and the uh, academic record of all of our faculty and researchers. And uh, it turns out, according to Illinois Research Connections, ART has 342 articles, 26 con conference proceedings, seven chapters, and one book to his credit at Illinois, which, which is really quite a remarkable record. <laughs> You know, that, that is a testimony to one aspect of his life, but it, it, it doesn't really speak to the whole story of his time here. Uh, it, it doesn't talk about the many, many hours that he spent advocating for the Beckman Institute with uh, folks inside the campus, external funders, uh, our fellow faculty and people all around the nation and the world. It, do, it doesn't show the passion that he's had for bringing teams together uh, people who wouldn't necessarily want to work together when they first get introduced to each other, but if you talk to them for long enough, they realize that they can benefit and really create something magical by forming a team. Uh, it doesn't include all the time that he spent mentoring students and postdocs and younger faculty. Uh, many of the folks in this room I know started out as younger faculty and who aren't mentored and maybe are no longer classified as younger faculty, but are, are still faculty uh, and here today. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I will say that the mentoring included myself. I, I got here about three and a half years ago. Uh, and uh, I will say that Art was one of the first people in the uh, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research who I met and got to know. And he was uh, not shy about giving me advice. Uh, and those of you who know Art know that he, he is a font of useful advice. Uh, I found out very quickly, and I think actually Art told me, uh, quite early in our relationship that he had been a boxer. Uh, and uh, I took that very, very seriously. Now, <laughs> if I, not, not all of you, all of you can see the photos over there, but uh, uh, Art would walk into my office looking like that. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, That's a good way to get extra money for <laughs> you, you, you didn't have to, but I took you seriously because of it. Uh, and the, the, I think this is one of the things that uh, makes art so special and uh, has allowed him to be such a strong advocate and such a great member of our campus is the, the drive and determination he has, the ferocity with which he pursues his goals, uh, and the, you know, re really the passion with which he approaches uh, the mission that Arnold Beckman gave the Institute here on campus uh, when the organization was started, building great science through interdisciplinary research. Uh, I, I, I will say, Art, Art reminded me recently that he has only lost, well, in his boxing career, he only lost one fight in his life, um, and that fight apparently he lost to someone who went on to win an Olympic medal. Uh, uh, his track record on campus was pretty close to that, uh, and, and I, I was very pleased and proud to be uh, part of the team working with him and, and to have learned quite a bit from him. So, Art studies brain and cognition and how exercise and other factors affect it. Uh, he has often told me that I should be standing and I should be walking and I should be moving because otherwise my brain will atrophy. Uh, uh, I have I, I followed his advice diligently as, as I do all of his advice uh, and, I will, and, and I will pass it back to him. 
Uh, we're, we're sure you're going to stay in motion uh, as you move on to Boston, and uh, we hope that that motion, as Barb said, will also bring you back to Illinois uh, very often. We'll look forward to seeing you much. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I'm very pleased to introduce our third speaker who comes to us from California. Um, as, you may, as you probably know, the Beckman Institute here would not exist without Dr. Arnold Beckman's vision and leadership and the foundation of the, of the, the Beckman Foundation. Um, Dr. Jerry Gallus is here as a member of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation Board, and we're delighted to have him here today. Jerry? Thank you. I always enjoy being introduced in an academic group because I often get a, an honorary doctorate out of the deal. <laughs> and what my wife Sandy says, treat it, treat it like the, the stagecoach. The coach, you know, in uh, Cinderella. At, it's good until midnight and then it turns into a pumpkin. <clears throat> well, someone comes from the Beckman Foundation from California wearing a tie in an academic environment and you expect a great speech. But I'm reminded of what Dr. Beckman always said, Jerry, don't take yourself too seriously. Now, with Art Kramer, it's tough to take yourself too seriously. And I was sharing a little conversation with Peter and he said, I know when Art comes in and he talks about boxing, it's gonna be a tough meeting. But when he talks about climbing, it's going to be a good meeting. And I expected to see a picture up here of Art rappelling down the wall. <clears throat> so we know it's going to be a good meeting. Dr. Beckman's aspiration for Beckman Institutes and the center at Stanford was really born back in 1976. And at that time, he shared his thoughts with me about what he and Mabel wanted to do with their fortune. They wanted to give it back to science. And so, on a long plane ride, he spelled that out in 1976. And in 1977, in September, they founded the Arnold Mabel Beckman Foundation. A year later, 1978, we were at a meeting in Washington, D.C., and my daughter, then 10-year-old, and I put the Beckmans on a plane and they flew here for their first discussions with Ted and, and Art and many others about what's become this, <clears throat> this beautiful building. And the accomplishments here are much better known to all of you than they are to me. But I have had the privilege over the past many years of reading all the annual reports of the five Beckman Institutes in the center. This institute has by far the greatest bandwidth of the five, by far the greatest bandwidth. At the other end of the spectrum is the Beckman Laser Institute at University of California, Irvine. That is focused on the interaction of photonics with matter. That's all it does. And stop and think what a small piece that represents in the continuum of science that you have here in this building. It's truly marvelous. And of course, Art, and I always have to go back to Ted Brown, and there were other founders, but I've come to know them, of course, very, very well. Well, Dr. Beckman would be pleased if he could be here. He might be a little harsh on you, but then, after all, I found out today, Art's only 63. But what I don't understand, as smart a guy as he is, he's moving his own furniture. Now, we ought, to have a, we ought to have a discussion about that. <clears throat> so I asked Art, I said, <clears throat> in the spirit of, of Dr. Beckman's good humor, how did you come to take this position? How did you qualify? I mean, why would a major university in Boston take a guy from the Midwest, a social scientist, and put him in this austere position in Boston? And he said, well, it was tough competition. He said, I had to go and, and go through a lot of difficult interviews, and I had to learn to speak. I said, well, how did, how did they do that? He said, well, they do that by 
DNA all the candidates, and they fill their mouths with marbles. <laughs> and if you give a great speech, they remove one of the marbles. And the person who gets the job is the person who loses all their marbles first. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid that's not a very academic thank you, Art, for all you've done here. But on behalf of the Beckman Board, thank you. We wish you well. Do return. Remember there's a foundation, and you remember that family, and you never will get free from that bond. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. It's my pleasure to next introduce um, the founding director of the Speckman Institute, Dr. Ted Brown. Ted. I seem to be the only one who actually came with prepared remarks. That suggests that it might be shorter than some of these other speeches, but we'll see. I, I, yesterday, uh, I paid a visit to the Spurlock Museum, I hope. Many of you know where that is. It's a wonderful museum on campus here by Act of Craner. And in there, there is an exhibit uh, which deals with a 1911 expedition to find Crocker Land. Crocker Land was a sort of mysterious land. They weren't quite sure whether it was part of Greenland or not. It had been seen, they thought, by explorers who had, were moving on, on the, uh, along toward the North Pole. And anyway, this expedition was mounted uh, with, uh, with, uh, the, to, to explore whether indeed Crocker Land existed as a separate entity and see what was over there. So uh, the University of Illinois was the leader in this. The president of the University of Illinois put up $10,000 for this exhibit and uh, it, uh, it, uh, that translates into about $250,000 in today's money. And there were only about seven or eight people on the exhibit. It was not a big deal, on the, on the expedition. It was not a big deal. They set off across the ice, and they came, it, the thing took two years, and they were, they took along a camera to take pictures, and it was an enormous, I'm talking 1911, this was an enormous big box. Those camera guys will know that cameras in those days were huge things. And some other poor guy had to lug the tripod for it, which was a monster in itself. So two of the men were consigned to taking them along, all that photographic stuff. They came back without very much really useful information, but they came back with 4,500 black and white photographs, which were really interesting, amazing. Many of them are shown over there. And as I was looking at this thing, I was like, boy, if Art Kramer had been on the faculty Back in those days, he'd have been chomping on the bit to go on that trip because he was the kind of guy who liked to climb over ice, you know, ice uh, mountains and all of that sort of stuff. But he was born too late. But he found a niche uh, instead right here in Illinois. Uh, Art, as you know, uh, got his PhD here, and he had not gotten his PhD very long before the Beckman Institute opened its doors. And we had as one of our programs, uh, a program uh, from, from the uh, Institute of Aviation Psychology slash having to do with uh, human performance. It was all part of the cognitive sciences effort in general. And so Art became a member of the, uh, the initial group of uh, faculty who joined the Beckman Institute. Down in the basement, there was a laboratory which had a flight simulation set up and Art uh, was involved with that. And that was the beginning of his association with the Beckman Institute, which continued all the way through the years in which people came and went. And uh, I think at the time uh, when Art was, when we were looking for a director, uh, Art had shown the kind of ability to administer uh, grants and contracts and people, yeah, which, and, and showed the kind of leadership that was required to make him uh, a good candidate for the directorship, and they awarded him the directorship six years ago, and it was a very, very good move on their part. He's done a magnificent job here. He, well, for, I just admire him in two great respects. One, he's built a fantastic research program having to do 
with human performance, the, it, it, all of these studies of the, I'm getting to be an old guy, you know, and these studies on the effects of exercise and so forth on cognition and aging, I watch every paper he publishes on those subjects. That's very interesting to me. And he has his, built this great team using the latest technologies to do truly great science in that area. But more than that, he's also been an inspiration to other people in this institute, to everyone who's here. Work hard at things, work with other people, be true to the spirit of the Beckman Institute, collaborate, be open. Don't just stick down in your little niche, but you know, make the scientific world your whole world and be part of that world. I think you've done a great job in that respect, Art, and I congratulate you. We're gonna miss you a lot. And I have one last word to say about Lori, whom I don't really know very well, except indirectly, uh, or we made some comments about Lori. I have a dear friend, Mary McDonald, who is an artist, a, we a, a weaver in town, and she produced a tapestry of enormous proportions for that kind of art, and it was to hang in the, uh, in the gallery, in, in, in the entryway of the institute that Lori was directing. I always forget the name of this place, the Doris Kelly Christopher Hall. It's at the corner of Nevada and uh, Prospect, at Lincoln Avenue, rather. And uh, she commented to, to me, uh, Mary McDonald did, that Lori was so great for two years, helping her, I mean, it took her three or four years to make this tapestry. Laurie encouraged her all during that time, and they, it was a difficult thing to get mounted in the right way. She just loves Laurie for all of the support and energy that went into it. And uh, so Laurie, a lot of people are gonna miss you here in this community. And good luck to both of you. Um, our final speaker in our uh, official comments uh, part of the program is uh, Dr. Jennifer Erdley. Um, she was an Associate Vice Chancellor here at U of I in Biomedical Sciences, and now she is the Vice President for Research at our new partner in the College of Medicine, the Carl Foundation Hospital. Jennifer? So, our, I just want to say thank you. I think I speak for a lot of people, like myself, at the institution. Um, your generosity has been a defining characteristic. It has been, you and Lori both, I think that is definitely defines who you guys are and what you mean to the institution. And to people like myself, your generosity of spirit, you have given so many of us opportunities to lead and excel and to have enough rope to hang ourselves and look past foibles and help us find ways to move forward. Um, generosity with Carl, I think you have been a real cornerstone of developing that relationship and really laid the groundwork for opportunities for young faculty, for physicists, for scientists at the, uh, around the campus, and then also for physicians at Carl that come together and build those collaborative opportunities. And you kept the faith over many years. I know we've had a lot of discussions about how do we make these work, and you always came back with generosity of your time and your spirit to find new ways to tackle that beast. And now we are in such a great place because of your work, because of the generosity that you brought to the table, your openness with Beckman, allowing your researchers, your staff to participate. And I hope that in a few years when you come back, you are gonna be proud and amazed at the legacy that you're, you laid here with the relationship between Carl and the university. And I look forward to having you back and showing you everything that's been accomplished. And I am gonna stop there because I think I speak for all of us when I think there's so many people who wanna to get together and say thank you to you personally. And thank you. I'd like to ask Art and Lori to come up here now. We have a couple of gifts to give to Art, and since there's more than one, I'd like Art to stand right next to me and Lori to stand next to Art. So then uh, I will make a presentation of a few small gifts, okay. and then after that, we'll, uh, we'll have Art needs to have the microphone. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> So our first little present uh, is for any neuroscientist, of course you need to have 
uh, a set of brain specimen coasters. So this is a beautiful set of ten glass coasters with brain slices on each one, such that you get an entire brain in the set. Looks a lot healthier than my brain, I know I've been in the MRI. Our second gift is a gift that we give to everybody who departs from the Beckman Institute. It is one of our beautiful glass, uh, frosted glass plaques that, let me see if I can get this out here. Don't break it, yes. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, glass plaque of the Beckman Institute, so thank you, Art. Thanks. Thanks. And the third thing is something special that a few of us found online. And as, you, as Jerry Goddess alluded to, uh, you know art is a mountain climber. And so this, um, this physical activity uh, you know, correlates really well with his scientific um, agenda, research agenda, but it also um, is a nice counterpoint to um, his intellectual life here at Beckman. So we have a personalized plaque, which if you can see, says, thinker's gonna think, and doer's gonna do. <laughs> and it has a graphic of the thinker Rodin statue and a mountain climber, thus bringing together the intellectual and climbing aspects of Art's life. And the plaque says, to Art Kramer, in grateful appreciation for all your thinking and doing at the University of Illinois and the Beckman Institute. <laughs> Thank you so much. So now, Art, it is your turn to take the microphone for a few minutes. Okay. Well, well, I don't have anything prepared, so I'm, I'm not as well prepared as Ted, but I guess I'm as well prepared as everybody else. Uh, it, it's been great to be here. Lori and I got here in 1979 thinking we'd stay for four or five years as graduate students. And I still remember when one of the senior faculty at the time, uh, his name was Jack Adams in the Department of Psychology, uh, said to me in 1984 when I was finishing my degree, uh, Art, why don't you give me your CV because uh, we know you're on the job market and we'll give you a practice talk. Uh, I didn't know, and it's always best to give your job talk when you don't know it's a job talk because <laughs> two, two days later I was offered a job and it, it really shocked me because it isn't conventionally done here. And uh, I've been here many years. I hope I haven't embarrassed too many of you too many times. I, I try not to. I'm, I'm, Eddie is shaking his head. I must have embarrassed him a few times. But as you know, as a former boxer, I don't have to have very good inhibition, and Peter would attest to that, I think. Uh, but it's been a great place to be. Uh, you're all part of our family, and, and uh, it is all about the people, although thank you Arnold and Mabel and Jerry Gowis and the rest of the uh, the board, uh, this is a wonderful place to do our research and it, it, uh, it, it's been a great place for me from being a young faculty member to a, uh, a middle-aged person, is that true? I think George Burns was in a movie once and somebody said you're middle-aged and his response is nobody lives to 120. <laughs> so maybe I'm a little older than middle-aged. But I, I appreciate all of you and the great research that the students and the faculty and the staff do. This is a great university, and I know we're going through some challenging times, but this too will pass, and the University of Illinois will continue to be a top-notch university with our leadership that we have and uh, that you've seen here. Uh, this is a great place, uh, and thank you. Okay, so uh, we're going back to party mode, and I'd just like to remind you that if you haven't already signed the picture mats that we have, instead of cards, we have two picture uh, mats that you can sign. They're all the way on the end of the east uh, atrium. And we also are now going to crack open our two Beckman cakes, so please do also enjoy a piece of cake. Again, thank you for being here, and again, thanks to, and congratulations to all.